How's it going, all you rebels out there? Uh, we are back at you here with a, uh, with a uh, special episode of the Crack Day Gaming. Episodes. Special oh, teams, special plays, yeah. special episodes. That's right, baby. Um, okay. <laughs> that was so, uncalled for. <laughs> what do you mean? But, uh, it's a sketch it's quote okay. right there for you, brother. Um, but uh, so, so what we got going on today is uh, Chicky D, the man, the myth, the legend. He, uh, he made a top Chicky. eight. You made a top eight, huh? I did. How about it? I I did make a top eight at a 1K event. Um, yep. Just want to thank uh, everyone for being there. I uh, want to thank uh, God for just giving me this mind that uh, really likes cards and uh, just able to craft this beautiful deck. Um, seriously there. Um, not kidding about that one. Uh, Got to thank the Lord and Savior jesus christ i'm serious about that i think i'm kidding um thank you brother no and then thank thank you to you know uh old cranky chewy here and captain shikaka who's not with us uh he's yeah, he's asleep. asleep it's like five in the morning over yeah. in hungry exactly. um but yeah i made I made a top eight um not playing a meta deck, not playing your typical Aiden, your typical boba your sabine it was a rather budget deck as you'll see later you'll see the sort of the price breakdown um and it costed i i don't know what it costs now exactly we'll find that later um but it cost me like 70 bucks in total uh, cards i had to order i got got some cards from pre-releases and the starter sets um so a fairly cheap deck and uh yeah. the other thing is if you're not a meta slave if you're not a slave to the meta People and you come out with something cool like this, people will, will take notice. And uh, oh, you don't the, say, the, the, you K, don't say. The, the KT, the KTOD guys over there uh, have been, I've been, they've been blowing up my phone, asking for interviews, and uh, you know they got to raise the price on that. Uh, I'm just kidding, but just you know, kidding. if they want an interview, <laughs> I, I'd give them an interview. You know, I tell them all about it. You know. Uh, anyways, let's 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 uh not pop, mess pop, around. Let's get into, right it. into what, it here. What so do, uh, we're start turn by turn yep so uh if you see here this is the overall deck uh to start with uh bottom half or the bottom section is your sideboard essentially uh the googly eyes are on han from uh nerd parker uh had a brain fart earlier in discord we're not going to talk about um but uh I, I i thought that the, it's been a long day all right i thought the three below was the resource cost and so uh, oh my gosh <laughs> yeah it was a little brain fart but anyway, moving on. Uh, so first slide, uh, Chicky D. Let's let's explain the turn one play here, because I know we've been having a lot of controversies, you know, around these turn one, turn two plays with this deck, mm. and uh, just kind of kind of break that one down for us here. Yeah. So battlefield marine. Uh, nothing needs to be said there. Leia. You don't want her on turn one, but it's a two two that can you know trade into like a viper probe droid or or you know, it's a two two you know um yep a resupply turn one is probably what you're looking for against like a control matchup battlefield marine goes great into sabine obviously um if need be you can haunt ability put out an ezra that's not great into the control matchup obviously because then they can just power the dark side next turn and then you're behind on card advantage and uh yeah you're just behind on card advantage you essentially just like lose a card Yep. Um, same thing with Akbar. You're not really looking for him on turn one. You're, you're really looking for a Marine and resupply. I didn't have too much trouble seeing Marine or resupply um, in my games. I played at the one case. So that's really turn one's pretty simple. You know, that's it's turn one. Let's let's move on to yep. turn self-explanatory. You know, uh, yep. Turn two. All right, turn two. So we got a seven-two offsuit here, brother. This is the seven-two offsuit. I these. Uh, Crank and Chewy made the titles for this video. He made the slides. I let him have fun with it. He wouldn't let me make the uh, best one. Talk about the deck. stuff. <laughs> uh, turn two. So super laser tech. Let me just address the controversy, or if you will, about the super laser tech for five uh, out of aspect in the Han Solo deck. So here's what super laser tech does really good. And I played an Aiden in Swiss, and I beat the Aiden 2-1. Uh, it almost went to time. I actually won off a sneak attack Lando. Uh, you'll see that later. No spoilers. Uh, no spoilers, brother. To, no spoilers. <laughs> a sneak attack Lando to close out the hey, game. Hey, no spoilers. Um, no spoilers. With no cards in my deck. It was actually uh, one of my most, one of my greatest moments as a card game player. I was really proud there. 
Um, but what Super Laser Tech does against Aiden is once you slam that on the board, it really turns off their power of the dark side play. And I think on the game on stream, I haven't watched back the, the stream game yet. It's just been a busy weekend with the, the Easter holiday and whatnot. Yep. But you'll notice my Super Laser Tech stayed out for like three or four turns and just started going to work. I don't know what he had in his hand, but from my perspective, like his power of the dark side is just dead. Like who wants to power the dark side of Super Laser Tech? Nobody. And so it really puts... It really puts Aiden in a bad spot, uh, or really just any blue villain deck running uh, Power of the Dark Side. It puts them in, in a pretty compromising spot, because, like, that's one of the... That card is... I fear that card as a player. Like, when you're playing against blue villain, before you play a card, it's like, could he power the dark side this? Before you play, like, a seven drop. What if he powers it? Before you deploy your leader, right? And so that was one of the reasons it was in there. Um... Shout out to to Justin from KTOD who thought Super Laser Tech was in there just to ECL it to get the what do you call it like I the, the magical that. Christmas Wonderland play of exactly. Han Solo on turn two, mm -hmm. which you can do, which is something that's good against aggro decks like Sabine just to get your Han out there to start slicing and dicing units. Uh, yep. You Han ability resupply on one, and then turn two you ECL and. Uh, Han ability, of course, ECL and the laser tech, and then deploy Han. You can yep. do that. That's not why the laser tech is in there. Um, it, it was just like a fun thing to do, you know? It, it it worked good in testing, getting that extra ramp card. And then the other reason laser tech is in there is for uh, U-Wing reinforcement. Yep. Um, so the way the math works is um, on your Han flip turn, right? Um Let's say you get Han out, right? And you're on seven resources and you play U-Wing Reinforcement. It allows you to get that laser tech out. Uh, you don't have to pay the aspect penalty when you U-Wing it. So you get laser tech and something else out, Azatuck, whatever. And then the next turn, um, if you don't get to Han, if they kill your Han or put your Han on ice or something, you can laser tech uh, and get another resource in your pile so you can play home one yep. or, or home one or the uh, the reinforcement walker. It allows you another way to get to eight or even just back up to seven. Um, cause if, cause again, I, I, I'm going to make a Han, Han Solo deck, uh, Han Solo video on just how to play Han in general and how to not get blown out. This was another way just to not get blown out. Cause when you're stuck on six resources and you can't play that seven drop U wing or that seven drop Han Solo, that's where you really lose games with Han. Yeah. But if you, um, Back, same thing with the Han turn, right? If you're on seven, the next turn you're going to be on six because you got to defeat two resources. If they kill your Han right away, you're on six permanently for the turn. But if you U winged a laser tech, that can put you up to seven if you can throw it into one of their ground units. Um, so that's why laser tech is in the deck. And it worked pretty good in the course of the tournament. However, um, so uh, just to get that out of the way there um i'll add something to this you uh to? so your super laser yeah, tech all right also here's the thing okay so you're running a 50 card deck normally han would only have three resupplies kind of trash not gonna lie it's gonna be tough to see two of them to be able to get han out on that that uh that turn two super laser tech though you're basically doubling your entire chances of being able to get han out turn two i mean mm -hmm. it, it granted it kind of sucks paying for five but i mean it, in reality your opponent's going to be playing a three drop, probably a super laser tech or something. So you're basically just keeping pace with them. And then you're going to be, you know, one resource, two resources ahead next turn. So, I mean, you know, just think about it, I guess, kind of from that perspective. Um, also, we got to basically, you know, let's say you get absolutely screwed on your draws. You don't see super laser tech or, you know, any one of those things. You got traitors in here. Not a bad card. Mm -hmm. steal, steal their super laser tech. Traitorous. They... Another thing KTOD said is some of them didn't like the Traitorous. The main reason Traitorous is main deck. And going back, if I had to run this deck again, it might be sideboarded. But Traitorous is just great against Turret, Grand Inquisitor, Luke, Tarkin, anything. Yep. It just, just blows out upgrade decks. It's just like almost an auto win if you can steal their unit and they can't get it back. But it's yep. really in there to counter Boba Fett. That's one of the difficult matchups for pretty much every deck, honestly, uh, or at least most decks other than light like control. Um, but Trader is if you can steal their super laser tech or steal their unit Boba Fett, like if you resupply on one and then can steal their thing on two, or even if you don't resupply, 
if you don't resupply on one, um, if you can just ramp to where you can steal their three cost on either yeah. turn two, it would be or turn be three turn before three. it attacks. Yeah, turn three. Yes, yeah, turn three. Um, the round three if you effect. can steal their unit Boba Fett that they paid like fifty dollars for, uh, walk out of the event really with it too. No? To do, yeah, no, no, walk out the, put it in story. your discard yeah. pile. And, yeah. yeah, there you go. No, don't do that. Don't do don't that. Do it. Don't, don't do that. that. Just um, kidding. Just kidding. That's that's why it's it's, uh, it's clunky with you bring reinforcement. Of course, um, I didn't have too many issues drawing good cards with you wing, so I it never was a concern. But traitorous. Again, and when your opponent, it was an open deckless tournament, and when your opponent sees that that traders is in your main deck, they're not really going to be playing upgrades, right? Um, just because yeah. they could just lose the game off a of traitorous, like can just win you the game. Mm -hmm. And again, a great counter to steal laser techs if you can avoid them ECLing yep. laser techs in. And then you have Azatuk gunship, uh, which yeah. is just you know Standard kill an up. A wing, bright hope, stop the A wings battalion if you can uh, double ramp battalion's yeah. great. East yellow and take out a boba. Wow, um, East yellow. The reason but, Falcon, it's, it's pretty good. The reason Millennium Falcon's not in here is because it was he seventy-five have, bucks a piece, <laughs> and I didn't want to spend seventy-five dollars on the Millennium. He didn't Falcon. have the money to buy the Falcon. Uh, now, if you, okay. I have the money to buy the Falcon. I didn't <laughs> want to spend the money on three okay, Falcon. Okay, if you were going to spend the money, would you put Falcon in the deck, though, is the question. Because I know there's been a would lot of people put... talking about that, too. I think after... I think I would maybe sideboard against Control and to sub it in for Control and to be another A-wing killer and red three killer against Sabine. I think I would include it somewhere in the deck um akbar was probably the one card that didn't perform super well yeah he performed fine in playtesting it was kind of awkward though with the falcon trying to get out your ewing reinforcements while paying for the falcon and get out your you know top end mm -hmm. home ones i i would have to do more playtesting um like when i when i built this deck when i played it i wasn't like oh man i wish i had the falcon oh no where's the falcon um yeah, if you not... don't have the falcon it's perfectly fine i didn't run it i made top eight i was one lucky draw on a cell block guard from a Darth Vader for a making top four. And then, uh, and then one lucky draw and not then, drawing sneak attack the entire game. Too. Not drawing a sneak attack either. How many how many cards did you have in your or deck at that point? What? Less than 20 probably? I have no idea. I have no idea. It was probably 20 or less. And you still hadn't drawn one and I'm like, oh, it's brutal. I, it was kind of brutal. Anyways, let's go to turn three. Yep. Turn, turn three. three it all depends. It, uh, Han's pretty tentative. There's no like curve. Like, okay, we're on two, we're on three, we're on four, five, six. It's all depending on, you know, do you get the resupply? Did you ECL the laser tech, which you don't have to do? Um, and, you know, so I, like obviously turn three, you can get to your Han Solo, your U wings, your battalions to ECL to maybe take out their leader if they if they ramp to, um, you know, drop a Krennic, drop a Leia. Han Solo 7 drop Han Solo. I played against a Leia, uh, okay. a red Leia matchup. Uh, that Han Solo just deletes the Leia. That's how I won both the games against the Leia. <laughs> I, was like, I, I would just get, I just like, ramped like... ahead of the the Leia player and slammed the Han Solo. It's like, your Leia's gone. Sorry. Oh, buddy. no, they're all dead. Oh. <laughs> oh, no, they're all dead. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Battlefront uh, 2. Battlefront turn 2 3. Uh, I'm not sure why Crink and Chewie include Change of Heart on turn three. You're not really doing Change of Heart on turn three. Okay, but it's a six okay. cost, you know. Okay, look, Change of Heart's there. I, I so, uh, look, okay, uh, look. I'll say this: Change of Heart's there. Let's say you do, <laughs> let's say you only get one resupply or one super laser deck. It's basically there as your six cost kind of on curve. They drop something that could be possibly six cost to possibly steal it if you want. Fire to. spray, slave yeah, one. That's fire. Yeah, that's slave another. One. Yeah. Change of Hearts are really great card it's fantastic uh oh. let's go to turn four yep. um, also also want to mention this steadfast battalion also ecl so if you're, mm -hmm. if you're saving your super laser tech you're not ecling him which you don't necessarily i mean you kind of want to i didn't do it a lot i didn't do but, that a lot yeah I, but you want to kind of save that you can get the steadfast battalion plop him in one shot boba fett off the board good game I yep mean. that's one of the that's one of the plays Yep. Uh, all right yeah turn four at turn this four. point Thank hopefully you for... you're ramped up you got han solo on the board he's doing things uh at this point you're just 
dropping your Ewings, dropping your home ones, Han Solos, yep. reinforcement walkers, Landos, which we will get to. I'm going to talk about Lando. I think Lando's a great card. I'm, I'm going to try to put out two videos based on this deck. I've been sitting on this deck for a while, if you couldn't tell, and we didn't want to make a bunch of videos before the 1K. Yep. Um, not that anyone watches our videos, but, you know. <laughs> I didn't want nobody watches your stretch anyway. So. Um, but Lando is... I don't know if it's a great card. No, Lando's a great card. He's a great card. He's how I beat Aiden. He's how you. He's how this deck. He's how Yellow can beat Aiden. Um, and we'll get into that either in this later in this video or in a different one. But at, yeah, you're just slamming bombs. Yep. Uh, turn five is really where you're probably going to start wanting to play your change of hearts. Uh, that's why it's called yep. Robin Hood, Robin Who, because you steal their. Legendary Avengers, their Darth yep. Vader's, their big ship, whatever it is. Um, yeah, you just you just steal their things and smack them back with it. Um, yep. It's pretty simple, right? You slam in your home ones, pulling out Ezra, pulling out Marine, pulling out a Leia. That's a that's one of the big plays is home one to bring oh, out Leia from your discard to exhaust so to exhaust whatever you know their big tank, their big unit. Uh, reinforcement walker is great. It's a six nine. Uh, not gonna make a joke there. We're gonna smooth past that. That is not funny. Um, this one it heals three, and it it heals three. But here's the thing: in the Iden matchup, since Iden doesn't cards. do damage to base, because Iden yep. is the most lame hero to play ever. I'm sorry. It's so annoying to play against <laughs> Iden. It's trash. It's a, it's Get it out of you, Coach. Get it out of you. Like card draw. I was like, oh, I have zero damage on my base. I guess I'll draw the card, yeah. right? Um, and if anything, it just gets you the card draw. So like if it was a Marine, okay, now you draw the Marine and now you have two more chances, uh, during the regroup phase to get another Walker or Han Solo or what have you. Yep. Um, go to turn six, closing the deal. This is where really against like Iden decks, which I think is a lot of the focus of my mind. Cause that's what I, uh, barely narrowly lost to. And also what I played in Swiss. It's tragic. And also what everyone seems to like to play for some reason. I don't know. It's pretty. You're kind of. You're kind of gonna go to time a lot of the times playing against Ida. When I was playing the Iden matchup, I was just slamming stuff, slamming stuff, slamming stuff. The guy, the Iden player, was also playing at a, a pretty good uh, play speed, and it went, it went to, the timer ended, but then we finished the round in which in which I won. So like, you know. Two players, two like you know, smart players who know like how to play the game, who aren't yeah. like reading cards. Like, what does this do? Uh, it goes to time. So, like, if I don't know why people play Iden, that's that's just my little rant. Play Chronic. But uh, sneak attack. Let me touch real quick on the sneak attack Lando. So, the reason, another reason I would made deck Lando, um, is because he just deletes Iden. You ECL Lando in, boom, your Iden's gone. You don't even have to get ahead of him because Lando's six. Iden deploys on six because she's super slow. Yep. Uh, ECL on that Lando, take out the Iden, and then you got a six six uh, attack unit with Saboteur um, just sitting there, you know? Uh, and mm -hmm. their Iden is dead. That's pretty good. Again, change of hearts there. Um, can also sneak attack and other things like super your lazy walkers. Like your super laser <laughs> tech as well. That's a, that's another play you can do earlier in the game yeah, in, instead of ECLing it. Instead of using Han's in. ability to go to five, you yep. can just sneak attack it in. You can sneak attack it in for and, uh, uh, what four, right? Four. Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's you basically just substitute that for Han's ability, and you can get an extra two damage on board as long as yep. you're not afraid they're gonna like waylay your super laser tech. Got to be wary of that. Um, yeah. But if they got Power of the Dark Side in their hand, it's great because maybe they'll play Power of the Dark Side and kill your laser tech for you. Um, and even if you don't get to hit with it, it'll still go to your resources at the end of the round. Yep. Um, and Sneak Attack sneak attack Home 1's great because you can get that 7-drop unit um, that'll restore 2 health and then play an Ezra or play whatever. And then if you got other units, you can also get the restore off that. One thing Bobby Sapphire did say in their uh, most recent podcast or whatever was he would include Fleet Lieutenant in this deck. And just so you could uh, sneak attack home one and play Fleet Lieutenant uh, to then attack that with home one, you... nine to base, heal two. How many resources does that cost you? What, nine? 
you'd have to be on seven. No, because you play the fleet lieutenant for free off home one, right? Oh yeah, I get, yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, I yeah. See what you're getting and there. I think yeah. that that's a really good idea that I'll probably mix into this deck. Oh, that could be. Um, the really reason good. fleet yeah. lieutenant, I I I experimented with fleet lieutenant a little bit, and it was kind of like this in the sideboard of the sideboard. Um, yeah. a my leader's not a rebel, and then. There's other cards like Lando in the sideboard that aren't rebels. You got the Walker that's not a rebel. Yeah. Um, the unit Han's not a rebel. There's just not not, not everything's a rebel. rebel. That's yeah. that's the difficult part. I think you can I think you could still definitely make it work. Um, I think with the home one play, maybe it's like a two copy of that you just try to get in your discard pile to pull that off. And I think that's a great closer. Yeah. But um Lando. Let's uh touch on Lando real quick. Uh when played, you return up to two friendly resources to their owner's hands. Everyone thinks that's garbage because it's like, why are you getting rid it's of your not, resources? It's well, not. Here's the thing. When you're playing against Iden Versio, you're going to turn 15. This is what happened. <laughs> we probably went to turn 15 or 16 turns in the Swiss round uh, against this Iden. It's and crazy. I had I had like 14, I had like 14 or 15 resources. And I'm like, well, if I play Lando, I can just get whatever I want. And so I played a Lando, picked up a sneak attack in the Lando, and won that way. I won so off a of Lando stupid. play to sneak attack a Lando to pick up sneak attack, and oh no, I only have 13 <laughs> resources left. Um, exactly. So Lando, like obviously if you're going against an aggro deck like Sabine, Lando's not going to be great because you don't really use his win played. Nope. Um, so you don't really... He's not great then, if anything. He's, I mean, he's still a 6 5. He's still does 6 damage and can bust through shields and um, Sentinel if you need it. But uh, yeah, like against Aiden, you're going to turn 15. Yep. Like, I can't emphasize that enough. Um, so Lando's great. I think Lando's a great card. He's, he's Yellow's answer to the, the late game shenanigans of I the late game shenanigans decks. Iden, yeah. Renick, uh, Palpatine, whatever. Lovecraft. Right. So let's uh, go to the bench warmers, the sideboard. Yeah, let's look at it. Yep. Um, what are you taking out? All right. The... All right. Before, before we start, before we start, okay. Consortium Star yeah. Viper, you really mm -hmm. keeping that in the deck over something like a Falcon? Um, would you? Would you not? Yes. Because Sabine, Sabine's another Sabine. It's I. Yeah. I didn't place Consortium Star Viper once. I don't think it's it's in there strictly for the Sabine matchup. Um, and even I guess you could board it in the Boba matchup just to get some extra damage on the Slave One, or the Fire Spray, whichever one you want to call it. Um, but it's there for the Sabine matchup. It drops an A Wing. It drops a Red Three and stays to the board. It can restore two. Um, but I don't think you need it. Um, I don't think you need it. I think if you wanted to swap Falcon for it, I think you'd be perfectly fine doing that if you're a big Falcon guy. And Rogue Operative, this thing puts in work, man. Um, it's the same. It does the same thing as Lando. Uh, in the Swiss Swiss round against the item player, I had this thing on the board, and he was on uh, six resources. Didn't deploy his item because it one shots the item. Yep. Right. This this Rogue Operative, it, it one taps the item. It trades with item perfectly. Um. So, and I think it's kind of underrated. The 2-4 stat line is kind of clunky for people to trade into. And I also wanted to just keep it in there for like the Chur, or not the Chur, um, I guess Chur too, because Chur can play shields, but like the Chewbacca decks, in case there was that Chewbacca player I didn't want to lose to that Luke Skywalker decks. Um, any of that like hero blue stuff. And, and, play, and a oh, four damage is a lot of damage to base. You know, if I got that off twice against the, the item player in Swiss, and that was eight damage. I was like, that's a yeah. lot of damage, you know? Ooh, so uh, you could fully damage. swap it out. Yeah, that's a lot of damage. You could definitely swap it out if you wanted. Um, I would probably main deck Lando having played um, a full tournament with it. And change of heart, you could run three in main deck. I just think, I was expecting a lot more aggro. I was expecting a lot more Sabine. And change of heart is not the card you want to see against Sabine, particularly. Um, yep. But you could you could main deck it if your if your local meta is Iden heavy or Krennic heavy or Palpatine heavy. I think you'd be perfectly fine doing that. Um, and that's those are the benchwarmers. You know, that's 
Yep. That's the deck. You... That's it. I'm, um, I'm assuming we're swapping uh, Lando out for Traitorous then. I'm guessing. Um, I don't know. I'd have to review the list. Maybe, maybe Akbar or Akbar. Um, yeah. I don't know. The the other here's another reason Lando is great, and I'm gonna go over this uh, more in depth in my on tips video tips and tricks video whatever you want to call it i'm still still brewing it i just i uh, thought of the idea just a couple hours ago um when you deploy han and you can't deploy him safely you can't always do that like maybe they're sitting on two resources and could have a, a no good to me dead or they're sitting on yep. their ecl battalion with their leader out and could just drop your han yep if you can't get to that seven resource yeah. play uh and you just play nothing for the turn that that's really punishing but lando has a six drop let's say like you deploy han and you can't attack with him to get that seven three source you can just drop lando for six and you're feeling pretty fine yeah um and like with with, with like a battalion you could also that's another reason battalion's great is it's a five drop that you can play on your six resource turn you know you're leaving one resource on the table which feels bad but like if they put your han on ice and you're playing a battalion that's going to be a seven-seven next turn. I think you're pretty okay with that, um, yeah, because it can just trade with their leader most likely or clear a unit and and smack their base pretty hard. Um, that's why that's an, that's why I main deck Lando just to just to knock it blown out. That's the big thing that I see with a lot of Han decks is they you know bring their Han out and oh no he gets exhausted I lose right and that's yeah. that's another reason why this deck is kind of safe and it kind of plays to the field. Uh, I've heard some people say that it's not focused, that it's kind of all over the place and doesn't have like a single objective. That's because I was, I wanted to sit down against any leader and think, oh, I have a chance of winning this game. I feel comfortable. Yep. I have a game plan. I can win. There's nothing worse than sitting down and being like, oh, I lost the rock, paper, scissors, you know? Yeah. That's, that's the absolute <laughs> that's the worst, worst feeling. Like, like when so, I play, when I play Krennic into Sabine, I sit down, I'm like, oh, okay. I guess uh, I'll lose. <laughs> and such a bad feeling. Yeah, it's it's all about trying to put more of the control on me as the card player, as the player of the deck, the pilot of the deck, and not so much what leader I'm playing against. Obviously, you can just draw bad and lose that way. Um, but if you can eliminate, oh, I played into this leader and that's why I lost, right? If you can sort of eliminate that or mitigate that as much as possible... I think that's definitely a good thing because then you feel like you have more agency over the games you're playing and you feel like it's more you winning or you losing. Yeah. Um, so that's why it's not super focused. Um, like just trying to ramp to get all the way to seven and do the thing. It's not, you know, only rebels and whatnot. That's why it's kind of a little scattered. Um, that's why the, the you wing and the traders is a little clunky. Um, but like, that's the thing with this deck. There wasn't a deck that I faced that I was like, it's an auto loss. And every game I played, I was like, I was, I was in the game. Like I felt like I could win. And so yeah. that's, that's that. Um, that's the deck guys. I think yeah. that's pretty I'll, much it. Uh, do we got, we don't have any more slides. I, I don't do. think so. We oh, do. we do. We do. We do. We do. We do brother. Oh, this is what we you've do. been waiting for. This one you've how, been much waiting for. Right. <clears throat> how much is it going to cost? Do I, do I got to buy three Vaders? Do no, I got to get three Bobas? <laughs> you ain't got to, you want to, I got to get the Luke Skywalkers. You want to know what's crazy about oh, this man. deck? It's a, it's a very competitive deck. Okay. Total cost. Okay. Based on TCG player. All right. $101 and 31 cents. Now, now granted also, you no. probably you probably already have a lot of these cards, so like Leia mm -hmm. Organa, you know, makes up eight dollars of that. You probably already have a starter set, so you're probably not gonna have to play that. Yep. Um, you kind of you know like U wings, you might have one of them, so you know, because it's it's just a rare, I think, right? It's just a rare, yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, things like that. Well, you know, the only legendaries are home one and uh, change of heart. Change of heart. Yeah, and only I mean six. like, and you know, and and a lot of people they especially like at your locals, like I know at my local. A lot of guys, you know, they don't really care about their, you know, change of hearts or their home ones or, you know, U wings, things like that. They just want the bobas. Yeah, they want the they, they want the bobas and the Vaders. And so I've actually traded like like some of my uh OP stuff. I trade for like change of hearts and home ones and things like that. Because I don't I don't care about the OP stuff. I just want to have a deck to play. I don't care about how card right. cool the card <laughs> looks, you know. Um Yeah. Yeah, but I mean And I'll, if you have the Han Solo from your starter set, that takes off uh three cents 
and let oh no 75 cents sorry i was looking at the leader on yeah uh the, so these, these this is this is three this is for three costs of each so it'd be 25 cents because it only comes with one i think right so this is, this is for the total uh, yes. the total the total three costs oh, yes. of all of them that's a good point 25 yeah. cents it'll save you a quarter you can get a gumball cents. as well you can get a gumball but then you know like i mean traitorous you know People will trade, you know, some trash for traders, or they have a bunch of leftovers, and you can trade your OP promo stuff. They won't after they watch this video. <laughs> that, might that. that might be Tell true. That might be true. But I mean, like, a lot, a lot of the cards, like, not a lot of guys are playing, you know. Everybody wants the Aiden. Everybody wants the Boba. Everybody wants the Vader. Nobody cares about Han. Everybody wants the Sabine. So, like, all of my Sabine cards, yeah. all of my, you know, my Vader cards, which... I wish I could play Vader. Kind of sucks that I can't because he's so expensive. But uh, you know, uh, yeah. but I mean, this is a cheap, solid deck that literally it it didn't make top four on dumb luck draws. You know, one one draw. Oh yeah, my two gosh. two draws that, technically. That was heartbreaking. One draw. If you haven't, if you haven't, go was, watch tough. on Golden Dice podcast. They stream the event. Uh, we'll either put the timestamp on screen in description or comments, and you can watch the the games with this deck as well. Yeah, um, was, and like uh, the thing is, the guy the guy was playing at the top eight. His one showcase leader item versio is like three times or two and a half times and a half expensive times as my whole deck. Yeah. His his one Darth Vader is like the price of my yeah. whole deck. Pretty so. much, pretty much one Darth Vader. If you yeah. already, if let me put it this way, okay, if you already have Leia Organa and you already have ECL, one Darth Vader is more expensive. <laughs> this entire yeah, deck if you have if you have if it's you got a starter crazy. set and you got the leia and the han solo and whatnot <laughs> trade your darth vader for this whole deck and you'll yep. never be happier yep you'll be I having a, you'll be having a good time you'll be competitive uh all right well ladies and gentlemen that is uh that is the end of this deck tech uh we will hopefully we're gonna be trying nice. to get some more deck techs out there we know uh our last more budget deck, deck techs too yep budget deck techs specifically um because we know you know, there's probably a lot of guys like me that literally have $121 in their bank account right now. Good stuff. Um, you know, but, uh, I, love that there for you. <laughs> I love that there for you, bro. Thank you, brother. But uh, I can't afford a Darth Vader in the slightest. But uh, so, you know, these bunch of deck decks where, you know, you know, like credit, like the credit deck, I mean, it was like 15 bucks, you know, we'll be having some more of those come out um, in the future. So make sure you stay tuned for those. Uh, we know that our last one did pretty good. So uh, we know that you guys like those, and we'll be putting more of them out. And make sure no. to keep your blaster in your holster. And don't be a meta slave. Don't be a meta slave. Don't you do it. Don't be a meta slave.